Global Banking and Finance Review Awards reflect the innovation, achievement, strategy, progressive and inspirational changes taking place within the global financial community. The awards were created to recognize companies of all sizes, prominent in particular areas of expertise and excellence within the global financial community. This time we're pleased to present an award to Home Credit Finance. Home Credit's goal is to enable people to keep up with their ambitions and needs in a fast, simple way and is working across the world in three continents. It has created 135,000 jobs, opened hundreds of thousands of points of sale and helped millions of people's lives to become better and provide more than 100 million loans. The aim is to lend without creating unnecessary obstacles. In many countries, Home Credit has introduced the term consumer finance and developed revolutionary products. Home Credit has enabled people to connect with their families as well as the whole world and to help others find the means for transport and commerce. Home Credit's philosophy is to build a better life. Global Banking and Finance is pleased to be able to present Home Credit an award for Best Consumer Finance Company China 2017. Recently, Mel Carville, a member of the Board of Directors, visited our London studios and received the award from Global Banking's Rabia Mada. Later, he spoke with me about the success of the company. Mel, welcome to London and indeed congratulations on the award from Global Banking and Finance Review. Thank you very much. It's a, it's a great pleasure to be here and a great honour to have won the award. Well, as a leader, of course, in consumer financing your organisation, uh, what do you think has uh, led to the success? What can you attribute to that? Well, I think it's because we're a customer-centric organisation, so we organise everything we do around the needs of the Chinese consumer. So the type of products we offer, the way we offer them, uh, and um, uh, we are able to service um, 70 million people globally and in China 37 million uh, since our uh, initiation in the country. Well consumer finance of course is a growth industry in China. Uh, what do you think the driving forces are behind that? So it's a new industry. Uh, it's been going uh, only a few years. Um, China obviously is a, an enormous country uh, and if we look at the uh, penetration of, of debt the household to GDP ratio in China is about 44%, and that's half what it is in the United States. So we're really at the beginning of the story. Um, there's a, a long way to go. Um, if we think about, uh, for example, the evolution of consumer finance in the United States, at a time that the US was uh, becoming a more consumer-oriented economy and was urbanizing, similar things that are happening in China right now, um, more than 50% of household goods and indeed cars were financed by consumer finance and in China that number is much much more, maybe a fifth of that today so there's an enormous scope for growth. So there's development going on as you say it's, a, it's a, almost a new thing in some ways uh, what would you say the challenges were in China for consumer financing? Well uh, the biggest challenge for any consumer finance company is, is always to ensure that we don't over debt people uh, and we're always on the lookout uh, for a consumer credit boom which can lead to a bust. Uh, so the key thing is to have a uh, very sophisticated risk management system to make sure that we only lend to people who can comfortably afford to pay back and always be on the outlook for those macro trends which could lead to, uh, to a problem. Uh, of course that can always happen so the, another key thing is to make sure that your company is strong, you carry strong capital and strong reserves and you stress test from time to time to make sure that you will survive uh, the downturn which inevitably comes over a long business cycle. So you have to be aware of the situation at all times and try and predict as far forward as you can. That's right. But that's like finance everywhere, isn't it? Indeed, and predicting the future is always very challenging. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, let's look at something from the present then. Um, tell me a little bit more about the POS network, which is one of the innovations that your, your organisation operates. Yes, well we have uh, 235,000 points of sale. POS means points of sale. Yeah. So that's where our products are available in stores and um, that covers a large part of China. In fact 213 cities in 29 provinces uh, and it's at those points of sale that you can get a loan to finance 
uh, something, be it a mobile phone or refrigerator or a television or, 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 or whatever. Um, and those points of sale are available in stores. So the big stores like Suning and Dishitong, but also in the mom and pop stores that are in the smaller parts uh, of uh, the cities and, and also in the smaller towns. So how does it actually benefit consumers and indeed retailers? Well, from a consumer point of view, you can have the, the product sooner than you might otherwise be able to have it. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it's available almost everywhere. Uh, so it's very convenient. From the producer of a good and the retailer of a good, they are able to sell more because um, consumers are able to afford it sooner than they would otherwise be able to do. So it's a big plus uh, for the retailer. When it comes to consumers, obviously there, there, there are always those nervous moments about what decisions they should take about financing. What, what advice do you actually have for consumers over financing? Well, the most obvious uh, uh, piece of advice I would give is never take on an obligation that uh, you can't afford. Uh, and to be able to do that, you must have some basic financial education. So you must understand how to do the family budget. And that's a hugely important thing. Actually, something that we do quite a lot uh, with our consumers. We, we teach them about financial literacy and we help them when they're thinking about taking a loan to ensure that they are able to pay it back. Um, we also do something else which is, is pretty unique uh, and that is we have a cooling off period in China. Um, uh, that's not required by law but we offer it and it means that the consumer if they change their mind within 14 days can cancel the loan at no cost. So maybe if someone's a little bit overexcited about the latest TV mm -hmm. and they enter into an arrangement that they really shouldn't have done and they reflect on it, with us you can cancel that within the 14 days. So it's a, it's a nice safeguard obviously. Yes. What, what kind of loans do you actually offer con consumers? So we offer a, a range of different loans. Um, we all offer these point of sale loans. Mm -hmm. Um, those tend to be smaller loans, they're usually for something like 2,700 renminbi. Um, we also offer cash loans which um, are not tied to a specific good at the time uh, and those are on average much larger, about 14,000 renminbi uh, and those are usually used for things like household redecoration, education, uh, those sort of things. And these loans that we offer are available both in store but also online. So if you're an online consumer you can do it all through the internet. Uh, and most importantly these loans are paperless. So the whole thing is done uh, through your mobile device or your computer. Uh, and do uh, consumers in, in China, have they embraced the, the modern technology in a big way? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I would say China is by far the most advanced country in terms of e-commerce. Uh, and even in terms of payments, uh, there are 700 million Chinese online and um, mobile pay has become the uh, payment method of choice. Actually, sometimes it's quite difficult in China to find someone who will accept cash. <laughs> so people are using WeChat Pay, Alipay uh, through their mobile devices. And um, this is really transforming uh, the way that Chinese shop. And I'm sure it's a forerunner of what's going to happen in the rest of the world. Absolutely. Uh, how do you ensure that your, your customers actually get the best possible service? So as I said at the very beginning, we're a customer-centric organization. We spend a lot of time and a lot of energy trying to make sure that the product we offer is what the customer wants. Mm. Uh, and we do that through obviously a lot of market research. We also measure on a regular basis the customer satisfaction through uh, such things as net promoter score. Uh, and we also think a lot about um, how we can use fintech to make the process frictionless. So as I uh, often say, our products are simple, easy and fast. And, and it's through the use of technology that we can help the customers. And we can also deal with customers who perhaps other institutions wouldn't deal with because the costs are too high. But through the use of technology we can drive down costs and reach a lot more consumers uh, than we would otherwise be able to do. So that's a kind of financial inclusion. So bringing in people who are poorly served by traditional institutions, we are able to deal with them. I'm glad you mentioned that point because obviously, as you say, uh, China has embraced uh, modern day electronic uh, financing in a, in a big way. But obviously, uh, I know as a, an organisation, you're very committed to, to financial literacy. Uh, how do you go about ensuring that that actually operates successfully? So uh, that's right. In fact, I mean, the whole world uh, has become very aware of the need uh, for financial literacy training for, for the population. In fact, it's a 
it's a G20 um, program. Mm -hmm. So China has embraced that and uh, we have been uh, helping the Chinese government and also doing our, our own uh, activities as a good corporate citizen to uh, spread financial education. And we do that in a number of ways. We, we run seminars all over China, um, free seminars for, for anyone who'd like to come along. Uh, we also produce some uh, books on basic financial education, some cartoons, and we have some online uh, tools to help people understand uh, how to manage uh, their financial uh, issues. We've also partnered with the People's Bank of China to help them in some of their poverty alleviation programs, sponsoring financial education in rural villages. So a whole range of things, but really all about helping people to manage their money better. So given that, that situation, uh, what would you see as being the, the, the future for online financing in China? So uh, it's undoubtedly the case that people are buying more and more online. Um, but we still see uh, a real place for physical stores and lots of people still want to go and buy in the traditional way. But what's emerging is a kind of hybrid. So um, lots of people want all the benefits of online purchasing but they'd actually like to see the good first. So, you know, a simple example with a television, you probably want to look at the quality of the picture before you buy it. So we're seeing a, a range of sort of hybrid stores where there's perhaps just one example of the product and you can see it, but then you can buy it online. So I think uh, the future of online f of financing is going to be online, offline and hybrid. So we have to make sure that we're able to provide our services through all those channels. and. Uh, th we, we can do that right now, but we're obviously going to have to keep up to date with the evolution of the marketplace. So exciting times ahead. Uh, and congratulations once again on the award. Thank you so much for coming to London. No, well, to thank you. Thank you.